All right then, we're we're live with the mm -hmm. question answer thing. Um, this is Jess, my friend. Hello. Um, would you like to like introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, Cause... sure. So yeah, my well. name is Jess. I'm in Canada. Um, I'm a registered nurse here. I worked in acute mental health setting when I was when I first started nursing. So I've been nursing about five years or so. Um, I was also a student on an acute mental health floor as well. Um, what else can I say? I haven't worked there for over four years now, so I'm not going to be able to answer all of your questions. Medical question-wise, I won't answer more so personal experiences, kind of my perspective. I'll try to go through the list of questions that you guys had here on the YouTube channel. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. I think I got everything there. Yep. I well, I, I, I think we should just get into it. I have a Sounds couple questions here. Um, some some of the more general ones are a little bit easier. But oh, what's your <laughs> this this one's funny to start out with. What's your perspective okay. on filming yourself in a psychiatric facility? Because you probably didn't allow that there, did you? No. No, no, no. Yeah, there's no uh, way. Yeah, and now it's funny that you say that. Now we, that I work in, I work in labor and delivery now. And no matter what in a hospital here, you need uh, consent to film anything. So really filming is kind of a no-no in the hospital, which is It's kinda, easier just not to do it. It's easier just not to do it. Yeah, it really is. I don't know why. Well, I kind of understand certain certain things. I guess in the setting I'm in now, people would, you know, they want to film what's going on where they are in labor. Yeah. And but, but yeah, generally, no, there's not, there's not much filming other than security wise. No, no. What I was told where I was, was that I just wasn't allowed to film anyone. And no. I had all my stuff there. So I didn't, I, I mean, they yeah. could have taken it away, but it seemed pointless, I suppose. No, you can film yourself all you like. Um, they don't want anybody else in, in the videos. Generally, I can't, I can't even remember exactly how it works, but I know we have some signs walking into our hospital that say no, you know, no video, no video capturing allowed whatsoever. Um, unless they have a specific purpose in which, I don't know, someone, management, someone from hospital administration would say, yeah, that's fine to do. But we, you know, we don't really care if you're filming yourself as long as you're not going around filming other patients. That's a no-no. But I don't know if I answered yeah. that. Question. No, I, I think you answered it. That works. Hmm. Um, I have another one here. Uh, it says, "Have you ever encountered any patient that was put there by mistake?" And I kind of want to preface that a little bit because um, okay. I saw that because question. Being, I being, that was yeah, because being being put there. I mean, what does that exactly mean? Because if you're forcibly admitted, that means you were determined to be a danger to yourself or others, right? To others, an immediate danger to yourself or to others, yes. And here in Ontario, we have forms that people are kind of put on um, by a physician. But most of them are, are voluntarily admitted, right? Yeah, majority of people, they, they come in there themselves because they would like some help. So I would say I have not ever encountered this. The way that question was worded almost seemed like how things are maybe perceived in media and movies and I thought it was an interesting question though. But no, never never seen anybody put there by mistake. Most people come in wanting help, um, seeking help and they are there voluntarily. If they are a threat to themselves, they are there involuntarily. Um, Is that the same facility? Same facility. Oh, yeah. that's not the same here. Yeah, it which it probably works so differently, different places. I, um, I'm curious to hear how, 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 and for us, like where I where I worked, it was we had two floors. The whole hospital was not a psychiatric facility itself. It was just two floors that were acute mental health. They were adult acute mental health as well. We have separate children's hospital that would deal with anyone under the age of 18. So I just worked with adults. Um, but yes, they'd all come into the same place, depending on. The, we do have some different facilities. If if it was, um, like, say there was some kind of criminal charge, that would be a whole other story. 
Yeah, but, yeah, because. But our but, acute mental health for all, all patients, involuntary, voluntary, however they see, come that, in. That's interesting because the place I was, it it was I. I never saw one person in there on a criminal charge or anything of the sort. Uh, and you, it's kind of to say, you might not, sometimes you do, and how um, how it's done here is there's literally, like, if they, they might not even be related to their illness, the charges, but they would have, say, if they were already um, incarcerated in a jail or something, they would have guards with them. Yeah. Well, so that helps, I suppose. But there are other. Usually, that's like a temporary kind of thing that happens, and there's other facilities that they would then go to for more, uh, like a permanent, if they need to be treated over a longer period of time. So, right. Yeah. Just glad that's not me. No. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I'm a danger to myself or others. Uh, if it, and how that works, yeah, it's kind of, I can kind of explain the forms, because there was someone, I think, asked a question about something about freedom. Who was hmm. that? Freedom from the hospital. I remember reading that. Oh, can anyone tell me the criteria to be granted freedom from mental hospitals? And I don't like to uh, call them, I don't like to call, oh, I don't no. like mental hospitals, I don't use that term. Uh, another um, thing with that, I just want to say, is that that makes it sound a little bit like you're kind of looking for it's almost like cheating on a test a little bit you can you can trick a doctor into letting you out somehow if if you do certain things and whatnot but they aren't keeping you there for their own sake no yes yeah yeah that's the main thing i kind of want to get across people like it's um there is definitely huge stigma around it and it's kind of seen as a scary place to be but where i was it's just another floor on the hospital treating a different type of illness. Each floor has their own, you know, specialty, what you're yep. treating. And people that work there, everyone just wants to see patients get better and not come back to the hospital. Yeah, or be treated, have the treatment idea, right? in the community. And they're all, like, amazing. The staff, all the staff that I've come across are absolutely amazing and just want to help see people get well or get to their defini definition of being well so they can function day to day. Um, but then again, you see, you are in Canada and I am in, in Denmark and it and would be probably a lot different in different places. And Yeah. Yeah. Th that's true too, which I can't, I can't. So this sounds a lot like, else. this sounds a lot like the ideology that's behind in Denmark. Like you generally want people to be more independent so that you don't have to keep treating them. Yes. Um, and that's, that's definitely the push. Like that's how things are going in Ontario, at least I can speak for we you want to treat people in the community so people can stay in their homes or out where they're most comfortable and functioning day to day, you know, normally how they would. Yep. That that's the issue resource wise, it's easier to get people to come to a hospital because all your resources are right there. Sometimes it's hard for people in the community. They say it's accessible, but you know, you have to go here to see this person, then here to see that person, then here for tests, and blah 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 blah. But the it could push be a little is, bit difficult, you know, probably for someone who is having yeah, and problems. they try to like like how they try to make things accessible, but it's really I, expensive. I just, the way it worked here, because it's the same here, where you have to get all these things together for it. To mm. even, yeah, but the the staff at the hospital actually helped me out with that quite a lot. Um, yeah. That was like a big part of their job, I think. Just Yes, it, it, they have so many staff working there that do, especially the bigger hospitals, each staff does like one specific thing there in charge of, uh, I don't know, arranging um, or helping people to arrange just getting around to appointments or whatever they have to do. People arrange with like physical activity and they're so helpful. Which was, I, I found all the staff was amazing where, where I was for my short period of time. Yeah. But the nursing home I worked at was about the same thing, except we never had enough staff, so it'd be, no, you'd always have it, to go looking for people everywhere. I know. Oops. <laughs> it was my pen. Yeah, um, staff is always, I know, and they're always cutting back. It's a money thing, yeah. unfortunately. It would be nice if they had more money. There would be tons of staff, and everyone could be treated or helped quicker, but... 
unfortunately, that's not the case. I can't just print them, I suppose. Yes, unfortunately. Oh yeah, now I was going to talk about the forms. I don't know if this is maybe what this person was kind of asking, but um, where did it go? Criteria to be granted freedom. And like you kind of touched on before, for us, it's the, it's not. It's more common to have people come in voluntarily rather than involuntarily, but if they come in involuntarily, it can be a concerned family member or friend who contacts who they'd be contacting here for us would be um, a justice of the peace, a judicial officer, or I think after that then police might get involved and they would be put on, or the person, the individual would get a Form 1 from a, um, a doctor who would just, all this would be is a Form 1 is saying that they need to be treated or not sorry not treated they need to be uh, assessed and that form one would last I think 72 hours so three days someone could be held involuntarily at a hospital until they are assessed and that's only but, if but it's only they until you're, you've actually been assessed and then they're... exactly after it's not a consent I should say it's not consent for treatment it's just an assessment if someone is um, and they really have to be an immediate you know, threat to themselves, harm to themselves, or to others. Uh... Yeah, like really, it's for their well-being and for public well-being. If they really think they're going to hurt somebody or hurt themselves, then just for because that is the main or, the sir. main concern there. That that to like that there's going to be harm done to someone. Yeah. No. Exactly. I think that. For the the bill in here in Ontario, the bill that that form is under was made after someone was shot, I believe. Um, There's been a few of those, I think. Yeah. So, anyways, that's why that came around. But after that form, that expires after 72 hours, and then you need another kind of form. And this person, I think, was asking how often it was assessed. You're assessed every day, all the time. All the time. So, there's... I can't really they, 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 I suppose you try to get like a bigger picture of the person from from day to day, like you. Yeah, exactly. And you keep so them there for a week, see if they are like if if they they have mood swings, if they have other good days and bad days. Is that just how they are? Or is this out of the, the ordinary? Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. So that that was what I saw when I was working there, anyways. So sometimes I suppose you, there's no no use trying to do everything right to get out, since they're just trying to kind of figure out. No, it's that's definitely counter, and, yeah, and definitely counterproductive, and they usually kind of get a sense of that. So yeah, th I suppose that would be my my advice to someone who is put there and doesn't want to be there is just 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 um, stick it out for a little while and yep. and try and let them help you because that's probably yep. what they're trying to do. Yep. Um, no, for sure, I would agree. And if they're not, I would get a different psychiatrist. That's the thing. Everyone. Yes. They, Everyone, like, people are, are just people. Even psychiatrists, you can get a bad one. That does exist. Yes, totally. Totally. Yeah. There's bad doctors, psychiatrists, nurses, whatever. We're all people. So, yep. yeah, request another. And there's ways, you know, if you don't think you should be there, if you were there um, involuntarily, there's ways to appeal that. So. Yeah, yeah. The, the most common one I hear is someone saying they've been put there by a family member, but... They don't actually need to, and it's their family mm -hmm. member who's whatever. Yes. Then it's then it's well, I suppose it's word against word there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It goes. Um, like the appeal process is goes against a board or goes. I believe so, there's at least three people in the board that kind of assess the whole situation. So. There, there's a whole system behind it, but. There I is. Suppose, it's quite, quite the process. Show understanding if it doesn't. If it doesn't take like five minutes I could give it give it give it some time there's obviously some things to be worked out mm -hmm. in my short time there though I didn't see um, anyone put there involuntarily that didn't need to be no so I guess that would be my answer right um, oh uh, I have, we have a music question music, music. A, yeah let's get the music question do you yeah. think music is a way to aid depression and anxiety and yeah, I think it's um, sometimes it can be a, a bit of 
aid is one word, a distraction, maybe I won't use that word, but um, certainly is used uh, in different types of therapies. Um, I think it's a good tool to use. Use How various types of, of therapies over there. It's not just uh, it's not just psychotropic. It's not just medication. No, no. There's a huge um, where I was working. Big emphasis uh, emphasis was put on uh, what we I don't know. <coughs> they have it there. CBT and DBT. So it's cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy. therapy. Yep. So um, kind of looking at the way you think, changing. Bad. Out of curiosity, did you have an occupational Patterns. therapist there? We did. Ah, we did. yeah, that was interesting. Yes, we did, yes. Um, and she was definitely in on that group who ran that. So that would, I'm pretty sure they did like a group session every day. Either one day would be CBT, one day DBT. So CBT was kind of looking at how you're thinking, um, changing, or recognizing when you're thinking in perhaps ways, <coughs> say, bad or patterns that are kind of unhelpful to you. Um, and then DBT was more so building up a tool, a toolkit. So to speak, that I'm, 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 I'm uh, hearing, I'm hearing like a skeptic uh, psychiatric patient trigger words here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what was it? Uh, the, the like the better to you, like because, because the how old was it exactly? The, the like the patterns that were supposed to be. I you know I, I can't remember. It's, and no, I wish... but, but the, I'm not I'm not trying to grill you on it. I just that that's something that people misunderstand often, is that they they feel like they're being kind of goaded into doing something that they don't necessarily want to do, yeah. but. Um, these people aren't trying to make decisions for you. They're trying to make sure you can care for yourself. They're trying to create yeah. a baseline of, of yeah. human existence for like be keeping yourself clean and fed. And that's yeah. that that's usually the what they're going for here. They're not trying to make life decisions or political things for you. No, no, this is right. Good point. Very good point. Yes, and there's definitely always resistance. It doesn't even matter. You know what what type of patient you are if I tell, um, I'll use a completely different example if I tell someone who has really bad type 2 diabetes that they shouldn't be drinking pop, they would be angry at me just because they don't want to change what they were doing and they think I'm trying to tell them what to do and really I just want them to not be sick or Another not, very easy you know, example. feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another easy, easy example would be eating disorders, where yeah. you have people, you know, very physically hurting themselves, but yeah. not wanting to stop. So, no, and those two types of therapies were huge, huge for, especially for eating disorders. I mean, for many, many different illnesses. But that, um, I remember quite a few patients with eating disorders that would go to those regularly. Some liked it, some didn't. Some find it helpful. It's so different for each person. Each I think individual. music, uh, like back to the music. I think the music thing could, yeah. is, yeah, I think it, it's an aid in that as well. But I don't think it's something that you should have like speakers playing it over. The, like, it. no, <laughs> definitely not. You're gonna have to account for tastes. Get some headphones and yeah, yeah. De no, definitely. That's individual too. Some people would probably find music not very helpful, not a good aid for them. And some, some people, people might would. might relax listening to heavy metal and. Some yeah. Might not. Exactly. So that's very individual. But for me personally, I would say music. Yes, is yes. a tool. Yes, that's music. Me. Yes. Yes, music. Yes to music. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. What else? What other questions can we answer here? There's someone who asked if it's possible for your mental health to get affected after working in a mental hospital for a long period of oh. time, but. Yeah, no, nothing's contagious. Yeah. It's like that's what no. how that sounded to me. I didn't. Um, yeah, that it sounds sort of like does. The... But no, but with any. Profession, well, you could get job, well, you could get stress. You could get stress with any job, though, right? Um, yeah, but that's or you could get, or otherwise psychologically affected by any job. I mean, it is possible for your mental health to get affected no matter what you do. Really. What you do. I don't. Sure. I don't think it's it's 
particularly more or less in the profession, what will you say? No, definitely not. I say like challenges kind of non or let's say more specific just to to nursing. Um, you have some, you know, patients, families, everyone's usually kind of scared and it makes them seem kind of angry. So dealing with that sometimes you have um, kind of people take that out on you, but that can be in lots of different professions. So that's uh, a challenge. That's difficult, yeah. That can be difficult, but I would say it's the same if you're working uh, in any kind of any kind of ward, cancer ward, anything. You would have probably. The same. I think that's why they have some of the rules in place as well for like not having too much personal contact with mm -hmm. patients and whatnot. Which is yeah. why this is kind of a fun thing that we can do because you, I, I haven't been your patient, so it's. This is true. Um, but it, it what can see can can seem like like you're there the staff might be seeming a little bit cold or distanced. Um, that's usually because they have to. Like, yeah. imagine waking up in the morning. I was actually thinking about that earlier. Just imagine working up in the morning, waking up in the morning, <laughs> uh, going to work, like you maybe grab a bagel on the way. Like, you're a little bit tired from yesterday, but it's okay. And you show up and you just get tossed directly into some, like, chaotic, tragic life story with added things that you're going to have to try to understand in some sort of... Yeah, then stuff you're dealing already with on your own, like in your own mind, getting in the way of that as well. Yeah. It's, it's, I suppose it, I, I, I'd like to know if it isn't difficult to go from patient to patient with, with so many different ones there. Like the, the problems that people have are so different. So different, yeah, and on that... And you have to switch your, your focus constantly for what you're supposed to be working on, right? Very much so, yes. The patients on that particular floor were very, very different, very unique, each one of them. Um, ranging anywhere, you know, from they were over 18 years of age up until however old they they were. Maybe my oldest patient I had was probably in his 80s or 90s. So you have to completely change how you talk to people, person to person, and what's going on with them. Makes sense. But yeah, it's definitely interesting. It is uh, can be difficult. It can be challenging. But it's usually the people that are there working there, they're there for a reason, and that's what they <coughs> like to do, and that's they're good at what they do. So I found a lot of them were we. <laughs> We, we had like a, a nurse who was really strict. I didn't like her very much, but she was good at dealing with like old drunkard types, like alcoholics yep. and such, because they needed someone to be kind of strict with them. And <laughs> I, yeah, no, for sure. I see so they that. let her have those, and you know. Yep, definitely. Each I found like each uh, staff member kind of had their strength. The per kind of patient maybe they were better at um, talking to or dealing with, however you'd like to say. It but sounds it's like you're in a really good place too. Yeah, that where I was, it's phenomenal. They um, have their own, like where I was, only had two floors for acute mental health, but they also are in conjunction with a whole facility that is um, <coughs> specialized in mental health, and they have a lot of community programs running out right. of that facility. Um, I think they just they just renovated it, so you don't really have to good. say where it I, is, but uh, no, I won't. Pri but private or public or or state owned? Public, yeah. Oh, it's state owned. Was, yep, yep. Um, I've it's never worked in any any private healthcare. Facility. You probably would have stayed. They pay better. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. But no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but it's it's odd. the education alone that they offered to staff I thought was pretty awesome as well yeah and so like extra education they really want you to be the best that you can be when working there and so that you can well, offer it might be a little bit more of an exciting job even if that's what you're into because you never know what's going to come in the door no <laughs> it's true that is true and they have um, there is a psychiatric intensive care which I think they have at the larger facility and then the emergency which is you know, very skilled people work in that that area as well. But I think they do a very good job of what they do. Hmm. Um, who decides the treatment strategy for each patient? Is that the psychiatrist solely or in is it in general, conjunction? 
there, I can't remember how often these meetings are held, but there is a meeting um, that's held with, you know, occupational therapy, there's the nurses that are involved, there's a family that's involved, there's the physicians that are involved. Um, ultimately, it would be the physician, but everybody has input, and the patient is also involved. So there is input. It's They deal with, um, you know, people, they always say it's holistic health care, so looking at the person as a whole. But um, it's, it's not just some guy sitting in a dark room some night who hates you and right. Oh, <laughs> definitely not. No, there. It's it's a group, a group decision overall. Yeah. So yeah, it's not how it is portrayed. It's not as scary. Well, I don't know uh, what you think, but <coughs> what I mean, you know, it's not as scary uh, as it looks. Doesn't in the seem movie. that scary. Well, not to yeah. me, but I was in a nice place too. Um, yeah, and I hear I hear it's a lot worse in the U.S. I that's can't. The, yeah, I don't know. I can't speak you, you to that. You can't speak on that, but but no. that's that's where I get a lot of the comments from. So that's but that's all I know. So I can't really speak for it either. I mean, um, yeah, it, it's let's let's take a different example. Uh, I I know some people in uh, Nigeria. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to some comments about that, where they basically did where they were, they didn't really have. Um, mental health facility part of the hospital so you you'd kind of have to just stow them away somewhere and hope for the best which is I don't even which is what happened here like 60 70 years ago pretty much it's yeah. not far from no it's definitely a challenge even in small like community hospitals or hospitals we have a lot of like outposts that far up north um, they would just have maybe a nurse at and then kind of physician to contact. They don't have specialized facilities, so you kind of <coughs> are treated by, you know, um, not an expert in the field, so to say, but no. general. But, and then but what I was getting at was you can... yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Mort. All <laughs> right, I, I was. Topic. <laughs> no, I was trying to uh, get at that this is kind of a developing field as well. Um, it's yeah. it's it's quite new most of this stuff and and we're like half the stuff that that is being done is, is stuff that's being being tried out essentially yes. um, yeah yeah no for sure i agree completely but it is with the objective of giving people more freedom and independence so it's... yeah and that's overall kind of how you know there's studies on top of studies they do studies about everything now people heal better you know whether it's mind body whatever at home where they're comfortable, so they yeah. want to kind of keep people at home and in, <coughs> you know, more comfortable setting if they can. For for me, it was about I, I I was confused, I was lost, and I didn't really know where to go. So yeah. it was a nice experience for me to kind of I I wouldn't say I was put on a path, but I was made to choose one maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm I'm okay with that, and I think yeah. that's how it should be. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I would agree. I think people have, you know, everyone has a different experience at hospital, in healthcare, with a healthcare professional, whatever. Um, I would hope most people have somewhat positive experiences, but there's always going to be negative experiences, unfortunately, as well. And a person going to the same place might have a completely different experience than a person that went there the day before and had an amazing experience. The next day, the next other person might just have total negative experience. So it's very subjective um, kind of yeah. what's happened when you were, you know, if you were in hospital or you're dealing with being ill, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff. Yeah, but it's interesting to see kind of how people, um, all their experiences have been. I always kind of try to keep that in mind when I'm with my patients and helping them. Because I've heard so many bad stories. Oh, this nurse, she was just awful. I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to try not to do that. <laughs> yeah, I get the same one. It's probably the like, same people. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you had that experience. I will try my best. <laughs> Right, it makes sense. Um, yeah, there was a question here. Just 
keep hearing awful things about mental hospitals, but really think we should benefit from spending time in one. What's your opinion? Why do you think that even mental health staff feel negatively towards their own institutions? Well, I don't think they generally do. Um, no. Um, all the people I've worked with and myself, I do not feel negatively um, about the institution where I was. Um, Didn't maybe like some it, people, right? no, maybe some people like this person has talked to, they have had bad experiences and maybe they're feeling negatively about it. But, um, I would say no, most people that work um, there that I talked to and that I trained or that were training me, they're very passionate about what they do and like where they work and you know, like people that they're helping and like people that they're working with. And that makes sense. There's, always, there's things definitely oh. that could be changed about it. Like they're, you know, like I said, they're constantly doing research and studies on how to improve things. But of um, course. one thing would say the locked doors, I think maybe we could do a little bit better job on maybe not having a locked door on that ward. There, there wasn't actually not, a locked door where I was, except when no, we were for, booked and we got the... Yeah, for us, we still had the main locked door, um, which I thought maybe we could get rid of that. <laughs> we had to get was... one when a guy ran off. They had to lock <laughs> it for like a month while he was there. Yeah. I know, which that happens, but... Um, so that's why they have them, I suppose. It That is why they have them, for sure. Um, but it kind of gives everyone automatically kind of a weird feeling about going in there. like the door is locked. I uh, when I when I came there first, like isolated. with my idea of what it was, I thought the door was going to be locked and I wasn't allowed to leave. That's what yeah. I thought it was like. So after just, I'd been there for three days, I kind of came up and I I, I, was, I felt suffocated. I, I asked if I couldn't take a walk or something and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah you can. Do you want to? Yeah, <laughs> yeah which is another misconception. <laughs> but um, like it's quite a large area and you can go outside. It's locked for a good reason so that people who maybe want to hurt themselves or hurt others do not go out and do that yeah but um and it makes more sense for for your type of facility since it's mixed with different types of patients whereas mine did not have people who were dangerous yeah it could for sure for sure we and did have the door locked uh twice that i remember because we had some bipolar patients in there who um had a had a propensity for spending a lot of money very quickly whenever they got out. Yeah. Um, but that was about it. Um, what and kind the of facility th wasn't made for locked doors. There, there's a, no. a, a different word for that. But how, how long is the treatment term for a typical first-time patient there? Or Well, oh, there isn't really a typical I, one. but. Yeah, no. I, To be honest, I don't know. I can't, I can't no. say. Um, so different I, for I, every person. I hear a lot of the bad experiences... Uh, usually it's at least from from what it seems like it's because they've only been there for like a couple of days or like they've been There's... there overnight and out the next day and for me that's confusing like what's what's kind of the point of that i think it kind of depends what you come in there for there's a lot like it was a wide range of what's going on with that person why they um ended up in that particular floor right and uh, I, yeah. It's really hard to kind of speak to that because I don't know what's what's the reason oh, they're right. there and <clears throat> if they're there voluntarily they can leave you know if they don't want to if they're feeling like they're a little bit better if they're there just for an emergency they were um, feeling like they really needed help right then for like a day and then they want to get back out there on their own they can do that because you know you're there voluntarily so but yeah, that's, that's kind of up to the person who's coming I think coming a lot of people in. are going to be surprised to hear that because um, yeah. I'm not sure that's how it works everywhere. Uh, no. It might be Canada, Canada, Denmark, like we're in, in fairy tale like, land up here. But. We, definitely if uh, some people who know more, who've been working in the field longer, know more that can speak to this um, oh, after yeah. this video goes up. But <laughs> um, like since you're there voluntarily – if you were admitted, you were they they have found a reason why, you know, like yes, you you need to be here, um, you need treatment. If they were there voluntarily, they could leave. Sometimes you patients sign out against medical advice. So 
your doctor who's said, you know, I, I really would like you to stay. I think we could do this, this, and this. I think this would benefit you. And the person could say, well, no, I'm just going to leave. And then they sign themselves out. And that's uh, AMA or against medical advice. So you can't, you know, unless they're a threat to themselves, you can't hold them there. So sometimes maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. In that particular case yeah, that you're talking yeah. about. And, and a really threat sure. to themselves. Expressing suicidal thoughts sometimes can be enough for that to be considered. Like you don't have to have done yeah. anything extreme. They they look no. for um, various things. I believe it's it's a long checklist of things you're supposed yeah. to look for, isn't it? Yes, it is, and I I can't speak to that either. No, I no, me. I, I, <laughs> I have no. I can't remember anything. But um. I, and that and that too depends on which country you're in, because the definitions of yes, the illnesses definitely. aren't exactly the same. So no. No, they're not, and that yeah, that's it's confusing. Yeah, it is. A lot of this is really confusing, but um, main point there being, you know, they're not trying to keep you there for no reason, or I don't know. I feel like there's kind of this sense, like, oh, they just, you know, people want to bring you in and dump you there, and you got to stay here, and we're holding you here yeah. because uh, you yeah, know, try oh, and relax just... and take a third person perspective. Kind of, what have I been spending my last couple of days doing? Like, yeah. Mm, what what is this like something that I should be here? If it's not, if you don't think it's justified, then maybe try and talk to him about it. And, For sure. And 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 don't try to act in a certain way if you think that will make them let you out, because that in itself just they're probably yeah, gonna not, notice that. That's something that yeah, they, <laughs> they probably would, but it's not really helpful to yourself. No, it's not. It's like not I helpful said. to yourself. It's not helpful no. to them, and it's not. Their really, goal is to help you function, and most likely won't get you out faster either so you, I mean it's likely not but yeah. they they want you to feel well or be able to function day to day so they're there ultimately to help you and there's tools that you can use so you might as well like take advantage of those tools that that are offered I would say see this a challenge mm hmm mm -hmm. good <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. Would, uh, uh, but yeah. Um, let's let's take uh, the question from Kazakhstan. Uh, ah, right. And yes, uh, I, do I the, the first one I'm not entirely sure. Is it okay for with job after? You, mm. Mm. Oh, is that one's asking if you got any friends in the hospital and if anything changed in your? That's is he asking ones. question to you or to me? Oh yeah. Hmm. All oh, right. I think that might be for me. Perhaps. Huh. Um, jobs uh, shouldn't be a huge problem, but I haven't tried to get any. I I'm not required to mention my diagnosis when I'm looking for a job, so it shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, and I don't think anyone is really. So. So if they don't notice you're fucking weird, then <laughs> you're gonna be fine. I'm allowed to say it. I have schizophrenia. Shh. <laughs> um, what changed in my view uh, about the world and people? Not much, really. Uh, it wasn't. A, it wasn't as different as I'd expected. Like a lot of yeah. people sitting around smoking cigarettes, which is a, yeah. an issue for fuck's sake. I started when I was in there. Yeah, it's bad. yeah. No, Don't I know. start painting or something instead. Anything yes. else? Yeah, they. You know, it's harder here. Smoking is. You have to be completely <coughs> off hospital property now to smoke, so that's difficult. That makes. It I, more think, I think I think it was really supposed to, to be like that here as well, but I think it turned. Maybe it was just impossible to enforce towards the end. I don't really know. Yeah, I think it, all the staff smoked as well, so that could have had yeah, something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> usually do. <laughs> uh, this is uh, true. <laughs> Everyone was out having cigarettes all the fucking time. <laughs> I know. You can get a pretty hefty fine doing this, though. But uh, yeah. That's when people just get right pissed off and start trying to smoke in their rooms without other people noticing. Mm. Can't go anywhere. So um, don't do that. that that's a no, bigger no. fine. I would not recommend <laughs> trying that. Don't do things that will get you fined. Mm, it's no, no, no. Yes, um, it is. Have you ever encountered any cases of psychedelic drugs triggering mental illness? So mm. do these cases get a bad rap? Okay. It's kind of a tricky one to answer. I would say 
of if anything it'd be substance abuse like long term substance abuse but if it's a trigger I can't say it's kind of well, a you, vicious you, you cycle don't seem of, you to know, remember a, a specific one but no I don't remember no so I would say no I don't remember you know specifically no but usually it's kind of a long term drug cycle. abuse though that I, I know that can do it yeah and then you're kind of why are you using this maybe to help symptoms or like you know so it's yeah you don't know what came from this like the chicken or the egg kind of thing yeah, yeah exactly so that is that is probably all i will say to that one yeah i kind of when, when he's at. saying yeah he's getting at the bad right i'll just answer that instead since i, I don't have a profession that i'm endangering <laughs> i am not i am not here to but, um at representing all registered nurses you're, you're representing here. yourself representing just myself these are right. subjective um, what he's what he's mentioning is that, uh, or what he's referring to is that sometimes when you get admitted to a psychiatric facility of some sort because of drug abuse, um, they might send you to some sort of a rehab program, which mm -hmm. will not allow you to stay unless you stop doing drugs. But you yeah. doing drugs and not being able to stop might have been the problem to begin with. Yeah. So, so they kick you out because you do drugs because you can't stop, but you went there because you can't stop, and it becomes a little bit circular. And yes. in in my experience, that's that's like one of the areas that could be worked with a little bit. But I'm not sure that's what it is everywhere either. That's just something that's not well here. Um. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know. I can't answer that one. Nah. I'm not sure. Not sure how how that all works. To be honest. But I think that's that's what he's referring to. So 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 okay. from my experience, yeah, you you can sort of because they. They don't know either if they're supposed to be treating the addiction or the illness. They don't know which is which unless you're off the drug. So they have to get you off the drug first. And if they can't do that, then I suppose it's the rehab facility that's not working out for you. Maybe True. try something else. Um, Agreed. I think that's a good answer, Mort. Good <laughs> <Thank> job. You. <laughs> um, let's let's do a let's do a final one and uh, All right. and call it after that. Um, All right. I'm looking forward to this. My questions are: How do you deal with child teen patients versus adult patients? Any major differences? I can't speak to that because I did not work um, with any children. No children. All right. So mm, I still everybody. I would say you have to kind of approach people differently, no matter what their age is, kind of how they will react to you. Um, I worked for, with children for a really short period of time when I was a student, but not not in a psychiatric setting. <coughs> okay. I was a completely, you had to be a completely different kind of, of nurse when you're working with kids, but I can't really answer that one. So. All right. Let's, uh, let's, I actually want to do this one too. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever felt like you, uh, like you can't handle your job anymore, or, and if so, is something you tell yourself or a piece of advice to help you get past it? I suppose just getting past difficult experiences. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, did, every day I tell it? myself, oh, like some, there's some hard days, for sure. Um, hold on, I want to see this question so I answer this correctly. Where was that one? Where Was it near the top um, or the bottom? It's near the top. Near the Oife top. Oife Hini. Um, okay, there's mental health. So, challenging patient. And now that I'm not working in mental health, there's still... Um, that they can still be challenging, challenging it there. even not even as a nurse just dealing with challenging people in your life <coughs> kind of the same same premises but um yeah. you're felt like you can just not handle your job anymore so what do i do when i get really overwhelmed and have really challenging challenging days i will call them start programming <laughs> you start pro yeah i am in school for something else right now but i will still always <sighs> I will still always be nursing. Um, I kind of just, like I was saying before, if my patient, I'm having kind of a hard time, maybe they seem angry or non-receptive to what I'm saying, try to remember that they're probably, you know, one, they're sick, and maybe they're scared about that. And hello, cat. Um, you know, try not to take things personally because most often it's usually not you that they're angry upset with it's uh, the situation itself so trying to remember that I try to kind of 
you know, put myself in their shoes, you know, if I was going through this, I would be really scared, really upset, like, how would I react, what would I do, um, and then when you go home at the end of the day, you kind of, you know, you, like, learn your lessons from what happened in the day, and then you kind of got to let it go, or else you get really bogged down with all of that, so that's how I right. would answer that. Well, I think, uh, I think we almost got through all of them here. I think um, so. So, um, well, thanks for, uh, Thanks for helping answer some of them. And yes, thank you for having me. Oh, so I hope anytime. maybe people, you know, see, you know, when you go to the hospital, you'll meet maybe somebody like me. I'm not so scary, right, Mort? Be, be nice to your nurse. <laughs> be, be nice to your nurses. They're people. They want to help in general. In general. <laughs> <laughs> people are people, too. Yes, that's right. That well, is right. Um, so I suppose that's it, and I'll see you guys around, and um, have a good one.